Mark Watson at FTS.com. I'm here with John Wellborn, who's the creator of Power Athlete. John, we appreciate you being here with us today. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, John, talk about how you started Power Athlete and why you felt the need to, to really fill that, that need for, for athletes. How did you create that? Oh, geez. How much time we got? <laughs> um, so just a little history about me. Um, I played 10 years in the NFL, and really Power Athlete started many, many years before we actually launched a company a couple years ago. Uh, and really what it is is just a snapshot of my training, my experiences, and what I used to go play in the NFL. So obviously, like everybody else, I started lifting weights when I you know, got into high school for football. And I was fortunate that the old power lifter down the street from me who trained in his garage was a guy named George Zangus who invented uh, the, the super suits and the wraps. So marathon nutrition, I mean, George is a legend and has since passed away, but uh, he had a three-car garage with weights in it. And he invited certain guys over from the high school to come train, and um, that's where I got lifting weights. And so I got a really, I mean, in terms of getting indoctrinated into like, one of the best situations, any power lifter that I ever meet, you know, like Louis Simmons or anybody else, and I mentioned George, they always are like, oh my God, yeah. you know, he's, you know, contemporary. So uh, that's how I got into it. And I got started playing football because my brothers were playing football and they were big guys and I wanted to lift weights and it just seemed like a natural thing to do. So I was fortunate to go on, uh, play in high school, got a scholarship to go to Berkeley, went there and played five years, got, you know, uh, two degrees out of there. We're actually working on my second and then uh, I got drafted by the Philadelphia Eagles and went on to play for the Eagles, the Chiefs, and the Patriots. What in following your career, what what's the kind of things would you think you would have would rather know with knowing now, who would you rather have known then as a player that, that you kind of figured out after training, after you're done playing? Is there anything you think would would would, would have helped you from, from just training other athletes now that would have helped you as a player? Yeah, I definitely could have extended my career significantly longer if I had understood how to uh, fix injuries. So, you know, injuries being the you know, biggest reason guys make it and they don't. You, know, you have phenomenal players that never get a chance to play either, but you know, show up and have a cup of coffee because they have some horrific injury or they come out of something from college. So I had uh, some pretty significant injuries, and if I had understood necessarily how to fix those past just what the doctor said, I think I could have extended my career much longer. And um, you know, what happens? You hear guys say it all the time. I played at a high level, then all of a sudden something happened. And I couldn't play at the same level, and that was the end of my career. That's what kind of happened to me. I, I got in my tenth year. I got hurt in my last preseason game in New England. And uh, ended up coming back and having knee surgery, and I was 10 years. And I, at that point, just couldn't do it anymore. And it wasn't until a year later that I figured out why, and more importantly, how to fix it. So I think if I could go back and talk to young John Lovell, it would have been like, hey, here's here's how we fix these things so that you don't get into these problems, that it's not the straw that broke the camel's back. And, and taking piggybacking off of that, what about athletes today? What is the, what is the biggest? Uh, Areas to improve when you see in young athletes uh, across the board, or just anyone that, that one of the biggest weak points that you see that you can The internet. <laughs> the internet is probably the worst thing to happen to training since uh, uh, the invention of the uh, Cybex machine. I mean, literally, the internet has uh, crippled strength and conditioning in a lot of ways because what it offered just became um, you know, so much information that I think it's, uh, it's paralysis that you know, you're just inundated by so much information, training styles, methods, and people geek out on that shit. And they go down the rabbit hole and next thing you know they're trying to do this and then in natural uh, you know, fashion everybody wants to create what we call the secret squirrel hybrids where I'm going to do west side, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do this, and we're going to pull out seven things and we're going to mix it all up into this magical fucking concoction that's going to somehow get them where they want to go, and it ends up just making them throw up. I mean, it's like imagine going to a liquor cabinet and pouring every liquor you have into one drink, shaking it up and drinking it. What's that called? Long Island iced tea. <laughs> what happens? You drink that one when you're like 17 years old and you yeah. never drink it again. Yeah, you never come back. Yeah, yeah, so it's like the Long Island iced tea of training. And I think uh, what's happened is in this internet age, uh, with the internet, with technology, everybody wants uh, everything immediately. You know, we're in like the iPhone generation now where it's like, I'm going to be late when you Not like I got to be there on time because if not, people are going to be waiting for me. So I think it's this, uh, this is too much information. So when I started training, I uh, went over to Zangus' garage, and we did exactly what Zangus told us. There was no debate. There was no internet. There was no, hey, what about this? You're going to do this. You're going to do this. You're going to do this. And you're going to do a little bit more. There was no speed work, no dynamic work. It was just lift weights. And uh, it was very, very basic, very simple. And I realized that the most basic, simple things are usually the ones that stand the test of time and work. And, but I, honestly, I, I see people... Uh, just get so inundated with information and all these different techniques and ideas that it just creates paralysis and I never do anything. So I'm, I'm thankful that I didn't grow up 
uh, I grew up in a time where if I wanted to know something, I'd call you on the phone. And I always tell the story about uh, in college, we were all trying to bench 500 pounds, and my buddy had the West Side Barbell videos. And at the end of it, Louis's number comes up. And at the end, there was a number, and we went up to the coach's office, and we called it. Lou picked up the phone, and, ah, oh, this is Lou. We're like, West Side Barbell? You guys from the videos? And he's like, yeah, well, we're trying to bench 500 pounds. This is what you do. And we talked to Louis, and I ended up benching 500 pounds. And so uh, I, I, I told Louis that story, and he kind of remembered, but didn't. But uh, I'm sure he's had a million people sure. call him. But if you call West Side Barbell, there's a good chance Lou will answer the phone and talk to you. And I, I think... Uh, if, uh, you know, for me, especially as a professional athlete, once I was playing in the NFL, I had the opportunity to go train with people I wanted to train with. So, you know, you have money, you have available free time, and you have the ability to live anywhere. So I lived down in Tampa and trained with a guy named Rafael Ruiz, who for me is, hands down, probably the best strength coach in the world you guys have ever heard of. Uh, he just trains athletes. He isn't big on the internet, and uh, everybody that trains with him is just, he's just a different level. He's a world-class strength coach and understands it better than anybody. Being able to search out and be able to go out and train with the best. Like if, if Dave Tate's the guy you want, then you know what? Go knock on Dave Tate's door and say, "When we train in, and more importantly, is there anything? How can I get in the room?" And I think people want to sit behind the comfort of the keyboard and have seven thousand different message accounts on different forums and talk about all this stuff. And at the end of the day, like the guy with ten thousand uh, posts on the forum. Uh, isn't really training because when would he have time to train when he has 10,000 posts but that guy's instantly means the most so I always uh, I always laugh there was uh, years ago on the CrossFit message board uh, I, I somebody asked a question on uh, CrossFit football and some of my training stuff and uh, somebody forwarded me the question so I went on CrossFit uh, message board and I made an account and I went to answer the question and as I answered the question this guy like this next guy uh, tried to curb stomp like, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about and literally curb stomp me and, uh, like, the oh, next guy, <laughs> well, yeah, I know, and then the next guy was like, hey, motherfucker, like, Google that dude's name, and, like, kind of, like, talked about who I was, and, like, the guy was like, oh, well, I saw he only had one post, so obviously he doesn't know much if he only has one post, and I was like, that's the fucking strength of the internet, so the more posts you have, obviously, the more you know, you know, or the cool, uh, image, so I think, um, you know, the ability to go out and, uh, you know, stick with it in the system, I think people just want too many options, too much paralysis, and I think you don't really get more far with it. Last question: That transition from going from coach or from athlete to coach, uh, what's been the what's always been the hardest thing from, from playing at such a high level to being a coach at such a high level? So part of the reason I don't uh, I work with athletes and I'm good with the strength and uh, you know performance stuff is uh, I would not have been a great football coach. Uh, I had a very unique skill set that was good for me. And I don't know how I can teach somebody that skill set unless they have a skill similar to me. So I think like the mark of a great coach is being able to look at a whole bunch of different people and then be able to work with each individual to maximize their performance. So in terms of the strength and conditioning world, like I can look at an athlete, work with an athlete, train an athlete, figure out where their holes are, what's literally like limiting factors, work on reducing those limiting factors, which should translate into better performance, assuming that you're actually performing. So a big thing with our training is like, you know, yeah, this is great what you do inside these walls, but at the end of the day, these are just opportunities to sharpen the skill so I can go use them somewhere else. Like, you might be able to squat a 1,000 pounds, but if you can't use that on the field, how valuable is that squat at 1,000 pounds? It's nothing for me. You know, it's a guy that, you know, Dave and I had a conversation, if a guy squats 500 pounds, is he going to be a better player if he squats 700 pounds? Who knows? I don't know. I haven't seen him play. You know, I, I knew guys that played 10 years in the NFL that could squat 400 pounds. But I knew dudes that showed up and had, uh, you know, you know uh, carried my pads off the field because I asked them that were strong with that. So football's a really interesting game in that it, uh, it boils down a lot of these things and really allows you to work within you know, your skill set. So for me, if uh, you gave me a bunch of linemen that were similar to me, that were six foot five, 300 plus pound white guys that moved similar to me, I could probably design training and uh, more importantly, uh, technique and show them what I did. But if somebody could do what I, I could do, then it would be a little harder for me. So therefore, I, I do better with the strength and conditioning stuff because uh, what I've found is that having observed athletes over the years, that there's going to be a universal blueprint for all athletes. And there's a you know, universal you know, set of movement patterns, and then based on what people can do, you can kind of reverse engineer and then kind of go back and say, hey, we're going to build you up and kind of move here. And we've been able to, and that's really what power athletes are about, is uh, this idea of you know, not only training for athleticism, but being able to take that athleticism and put it into a package that's usable for whatever you desire. You know, at the end of the day, I, you know, I'm not trying to make you the best in the weight room. I'm trying to make you the best in the field. I think it's a really good job. Well, 
Well, how, how can people get more? Uh, yeah, powerathletehq.com uh, and also Twitter, John Wellborn, and also Instagram, John Wellborn. That's where you can post John, we appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. Thank you.